The only thing more important than a 914 that's fun to drive is a 914 that stops when you want it to. This Bumblebee will have all new brake components from the master cylinder to all of the hard and soft lines to the calipers. Let's get started. All right, here's our new master cylinder from 914 rubber. This is where the brake lines attach. That's the warning switch. And here at the top, this is where the supply lines connect through the grommets. And here's where the rod from the pedal set goes in to push the plunger in the master cylinder. So this is the OEM style unit, not the easy install unit. I did a video on the easy install, which you can see at the link up above here. But these rubber grommets hold the supply lines in place and they're a little tricky. So you can see that there's a ridge in the grommet that holds it tight into the bore and you really have to work them in. You can see the inside of the master cylinder, the little supply holes. And what we're gonna do is take these washers, these are a really important part. These washers have to go in the bottom of the bore. They actually press against the rubber grommet like this. And there's one in there. Gonna make sure that it sits just flat. Now here are the supply lines themselves. They're metal on the end and then plastic up to the reservoir. And when I took them out, I marked the front and the rear. Now what I'm gonna do is use some brake fluid here as lube. I'll pour some into the hole of the grommet and also get some around the edges as well. And that's gonna help us get the supply line in. So I'll just move the grommet over the flange here. We'll do that first. You can also try putting the grommet in first and then pushing the supply line in, but I think this is easier. And now we just have to try working it into the master cylinder until it seats. To give me a little more leverage, I've got an 11 millimeter spanner here, which I'm gonna push on the grommet to get it to seat. I'm gonna work the edge of the grommet in. Just being really careful with the edge. Something just, just barely touching it, just to help it. And that's in, almost. Oh, that noise, that's what you want to hear. That little cook, that means it's in. And now I just have to do the same thing for the other side. So I have a little crow's foot here, and I'll put it on the end of a long extension and slip it around here and then have some leverage to push down on these. Make sure they're really in. And you can tell they're tight. And if you really wiggle these, you can feel the metal on metal of this on the washer. That's how you know they're definitely seated. All right. Now I'm putting all new hard lines on this car. So they come in a variety of forms, mild steel, stainless, and also green coated like they were from the factory. There are slight changes between model years, so just make sure you order the right set. Now what I have here is green gold. <laughs> um, just awesome parts here. These are the brake lines that are coated in OEM green that I got from PMB. Thank you to Eric. And of course you see there's a warning here. I don't know how a brake line can cause cancer, but hey, whatever. Now, when you look at these, you're like, hmm, I wonder which one goes where. Some of these are obvious, like these ones with the hooks here, they go onto the rear trailing arms. Um, obviously the longest one with the bend in it, that's for the center tunnel. I'm gonna have to straighten that out. Um, some of these have part numbers on them so you can reference them against the manuals and figure out where they go. Um, I know that this one goes onto the master cylinder and connects to the union, which goes into the tunnel. Um, I know that this is from the master cylinder going to the left side, soft line. And this part here, the kind of longish one with the bend in it, um, this is in the front going to the right side. This goes over 
the cutout for the fuel tank inspection pole. And this long piece here goes against the firewall in the rear connected to the pressure regulator. And this little squiggly piece, this goes through the rear firewall into the longest line that goes through the tunnel. I think I'll start there and put the pressure regulator up on the firewall and then get that hooked in. Now if you look closely at this, you can see the green color of this. They're really, really beautifully made parts. And I'm psyched that um, this whole car will have a completely fresh brake system from front to back. Now if you start with the obvious ones, you'll pretty easily work your way through to the not so obvious ones. Now the longest line arrives slightly bent for shipping, so I'm gonna straighten that out and put that through the tunnel. Now you can see my partially replaced floor pan here. It still needs to get some coating on it to protect it from the elements. But I'll fish this line through the tunnel, making sure that I don't go through the hoop that the shift rod goes through. Just requires a little trial and error and inspecting to make sure that it's in the right place. <laughs> and now we're gonna use a union to connect these two. All right, so here's the brake line that comes out of the tunnel. You can tell it's in the right way because this part is straight. Now we'll move on to the other long piece which goes along the firewall in the back and I'll screw in the soft lines, not tightening anything just yet. And I'll make sure that the line is secured under the clips with the proper protective bumpers. Now here's my pressure regulator which has been fully refurbished by PMB. Looking great. So here on the top part, uh, we're gonna have this, um, this union or double banjo kind of looking thing. And then this will go on the top there. And these will attach the unit to the firewall. And then this is for the union in the tunnel. This is just outside the tunnel. So lots of bits and pieces to make this happen. There are differences in ports between the early and the late pressure regulators. So if you're gonna order a refurbished one, make sure it's correct for your car or your lines. So now I'm just gonna put the pressure regulator on the firewall with the special screws that secure it in there. And then just get the line started in the threads before I tighten the pressure regulator down to the firewall. Just makes it easier to move things around. I'll take this other line and just be really careful that everything's clean. And I'll get the thread started here. And here's the right angle that goes to that squiggly line through the firewall. I'll take off the cap here. Then I'll prep the rubber grommet and clip and you want the split to be facing down so that water doesn't come in and enter the tunnel. And here's the completed assembly leading out of the tunnel into the pressure regulator and out to the rear brakes. Now I'll just attach this hard line from the caliper to the soft lines. And now on to the front lines. My steering rack is out, which makes the install a bit easier. I'll start with the long line that goes across the front bulkhead, making sure the clips are in place. Then I'll move on to the caliper side lines and connect to the line in the tunnel. With the lines all in, I'll put the pedal cluster in the car and get the pushrod distance set. It's important to have the correct clearance to the piston in the master cylinder so it's not constantly under force. The factory says it should be one millimeter. Bruce Stone rebuilt this whole pedal set here and you can see that He's used uh, powder coating for all the metal bits, the black metal bits, um, new springs. The detail is really, really nice. And this is the business end of the pedal cluster. This is the part that goes into the master cylinder and contacts the piston. We'll seat the cluster on top of the bolts and then get some washers and nuts to secure it. All right, getting ready to put the master cylinder in the car. This is for the front port. You see a little brake fluid leaking there because I was testing to see if these leaked and they didn't, which is nice. So what happens is a um, 
a banjo fitting goes on to the front here. And of course there's a special bolt that has a hole in it that goes through there. And this is what allows us to have two lines coming out for the front brakes. In order for the banjo fitting to not leak, there's two different size washers. There's a larger one, which goes the top of that, and then the fitting, and then the smaller one, and then it goes onto the master cylinder. All right, so now one line's gonna come out of here, the other one's gonna come here. The rears are gonna plug directly into that, and this is gonna go up through the floor into the gas tank area, and then the lines will go all the way up into the reservoir. I'll tighten this down when I get under the car and get everything hooked in because I don't know exactly what the angle is going to be for the brake lines and you don't want to reuse these copper washers. They're one tightening only. Okay, now I'm going to send the supply lines up through the fuel tank area. It's obviously easier with the tank out. <laughs> and get the master cylinder in a position where the push rod can find its way into it. I want to make sure that this, uh, the push rod, the brake push rod, is kind of far back because I gotta be able to get the master cylinder in. So I want it to kind of be pretty far back, but not so far back that I can't get the thing in. Okay, I'll get the master cylinder firmly attached to the wall and then get the final hard line here for the rear brakes with the right angle attached as well. The line coming from the front right brake, I'm going to put onto the banjo first before I put it onto the master cylinder because it's a lot easier to get it affixed. I'll put my special bolt with the washers through, making sure everything stays really, really clean. Now I'll go around the car and make sure all the connections are solid. I want to make sure they're tight, but not so tight that they mess up the mating surface of the flared line. A flare nut wrench is the right tool for the job. And I'm just going to go around the car and get everything tight. And when it comes to the soft lines, I'm going to double wrench. I'll take one of these clips and get it started in here. Sometimes you can just push them in. but. Oftentimes you need a little hammer. So here you see the master cylinder push rod set up going into the bellows there. It's adjustable and what we want is one millimeter of free play between the tip of the push rod and the plunger in the master cylinder. So what I'm doing here is just extending this master cylinder push rod to the point where it touches the master cylinder. I still have some free play, you can hear it. And I'll feel resistance on this when it gets there. It's pretty much there now. Okay, so that feels like it's touching. Now I'll back off a half a turn. That feels probably a little bit too much. Go back in a little. Yep, that feels right. Now I'll spin this set nut back, tighten it down so that it doesn't move. Thanks to Eric Shea and his team at PMB Performance for all they do to keep classic Porsche systems working at their peak. I made this video to show you what's involved with refreshing your brake lines. If you decide to do this yourself, it's always a good idea to have your work checked by a pro. Brakes deserve a lot of respect. Thanks as always to 914 Rubber and PMB Performance for providing so many great parts for this build. Links to everything are in the description. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching. Be safe and enjoy.